A little over three weeks ago, I bought one of these. It's a Walkira WQRX350. And it's fabulous. But the day it arrived was not a good day for me. The engineers at Walkira have done a fabulous job. But the guys in the publicity department writing the instruction manual, disaster. And I figured somebody needed to sort this out. And as always, somebody gets to be me. And one of the very big problems I had, and most people will, is coming to terms with a new transmitter. I've never had a Walkira transmitter before, and there's a lot to be found out. It's a sophisticated bit of gear at a very good price. And I, I was in out of my depth. But my biggest problem was that I couldn't get the transmitter to talk to the receiver and the flight controller. And I ended up solving that problem in a rather impromptu sort of way. And when I got in touch with the retailer, the retailer suggested to me that I should go for something called Fixed ID. And today I'm focusing on Fixed ID. Let's go back to the transmitter and look closely at, first of all, how you get to have a look at Fixed ID before you decide whether you really want to go this way. It might be a great idea for you, and it might be a really dumb idea, but let's go back to basics. I'm just turning on into model six. Notice that the transmitter is going through its checking process because this is auto bind mode. Right, it is now ready to go. So I'm whipping through to the model functions. Here are model functions, and I'm selecting things to do, and I'm going down to the end of this quite long list. If I was in a hell of a hurry, I would have pressed the button in the upwards direction, and I've got there a little bit quicker. <laughs> Never mind, I'm having practice with the fingers. Fixed ID, currently it's off, and now I've switched it down so it can be on. And now I'm about to press the wrong button. Oh no, that's the right button. Well done, Pete. 26186, you've seen that number before and it can be changed. It doesn't have to be 26186 at all. See, the two is now flashing. And now I've changed it to a one. And by the same sort of magic, I could change it to a three. There's the two again, there's the three. So then you decide which of these wonderful numbers you want and you press the enter button and it says run, and you change that to say yes, and you hit enter, and it runs, and there you are. You've got yourself a new channel which is utterly different to the channel that you've already assigned for other things. And it cannot be used to drive any other model. Isn't that fabulous? Now just demonstrating, so when I'm going to turn the transmitter off, power off, then I'm going to turn it back on again, and now you see it won't go through the warm-up process. There it is. It's ready to go. Just as simple as that, with the new code. When you put it like that, it really seems great. You can have 15 different models all being run by this transmitter and never a chance that you will switch one of them on with the controls intended for one of the others. Fabulous. But is that really what you're going to do? Or, like me, could it be that this transmitter will only ever be used for the X350? Then, does it really make sense to go to fixed ID? In my case, I was over a barrel. The retailer was telling me I had to. So I did. I was in the uncomfortable position within a day of acquiring my magnificent new aircraft, of being asked by the retailer to take it to bits. It did not feel good. But the retailer was playing it safe. The only way he could be certain that the changes being affected would be safe for me to handle was for me to take the whole thing to bits till I got to the receiver and then when I had the receiver in my hands, erase the memory of any fixed ID that was in there. This is what you're seeing now. With the bind plug inserted into the receiver's battery port, 
we're ready with the addition of power to erase any potentially existing bind ID which may already be there. I'm not going to make the battery connection because the receiver as it is is working fine and I don't need to replace it now. So just reassembling the aircraft to show you the final stage where we're going to use the transmitter to relay a new fixed ID to the flight controller. Now we break the rule so patiently described in the manual. Now we plug in the receiver before the transmitter and we turn on the transmitter. And all is done. Fixed ID on channel 6. But there is another aspect to fixed ID and I'm not sure whether I believe this. Is this just a yarn that circulates on the internet? Who can tell? But let's imagine that you and I are running a factory in Zhendong in China and we're employing all these very, very clever university graduates of a robotics course. And every day they come to work fired up with a brilliant new idea of how to make it even better. And you think to yourself, yeah, yeah, that, that's not a bad idea. How can we safely incorporate all these microscopic upgrades into our product? And they hit on a system whereby the changes in the programming were loaded into the transmitter. And they sit in the transmitter, totally dormant and utterly inactive, until somebody does a fixed ID. And then the controller is automatically updated with all the latest refinements. It saves the manufacturer a lot of trouble, and it saves the consumer a lot of heartache, and it saves people fiddling around with downloading programs and trying to install them as intended. Now, that's quite a yarn, isn't it? Do you believe it? I'm not sure that I do, but it's a bloody good story.